We're up to six bales already around this field. One sitting here, three down that far end, and two down that bottom corner. We're looking at probably about a dozen bales off here today. Hello and welcome along and welcome back to No Man's Land. We are into mid-April and uh, we actually have some work to do on the farm. We've got some grass that needs to be cut. So over here on our meadow field we've got round here. Uh, this is looking very much ready to cut. So we're going to go through and cut that. Uh, row it. Well, no, we're going to cut it, bale it and wrap it today and uh, get that ready for us to sell later first though we i've noticed the front loader on our tractor is in some need of some tlc so we're going to start off with that today that is here so uh repair for that is only 639 pounds so that's fine uh, i do have something come up in the or i have had something come up in the shop which would be fairly useful but i don't want to stretch myself to get it this, this Massey Ferguson uh, 4700M has come up in the shop, which would be a useful little tractor to have around the farm. But to get the horsepower we need on it, which would be the 100 horsepower version, does take it up to 35,000. We're a good 10,000 short of it. And uh, as a result, I don't want to borrow money to get it. And I don't want to... Uh, yeah, I don't want to borrow money to get uh, that tractor because it's still only 100 horsepower. And we could do with something a little bit higher than that. I'd like maybe 125 to 150 horsepower off our second tractor. So there is that. I should have come back here. So we're going to reverse our way around and grab this because we want the mower. Uh, so yeah, I would I would have grabbed it if it had been within our price range and hadn't required us to to do anything uh, other than just go out there and buy it. I think it'd been fairly useful. So we're gonna leave that for now. We still have got a few months until harvest kicks off. Uh, we're gonna have another round of. Uh, the silage before then as well so we should get a couple of rounds of silage in before harvest as well and that should mean that we're in a really good place on here it's good it is going to be very much silage uh and uh and our produce produce is doing well we've got four lots of tomatoes out and as somebody pointed out in the comments for last video when I asked the question as to exactly how prolific the uh, gardens are when you use fertilizer and seeds. They use half the water and they produce twice as much. So as a result, we end up with a double uh, the produce on them. So I think what we're going to do today is probably sort those out as well and get them done too so we're gonna go around here get this all cut get this all rowed up the section between these two fields or the between uh the two parts of this field i very much do feel that, that probably i could get away with cutting along there or or making it into uh the same grass setup as we've got around the rest of this field would uh might help uh produce a little bit more grass but it gets really fiddly around there. Uh, which is why this isn't an arable field. Because this, as an arable field, would be even more fiddly. So uh, I want to try and avoid getting uh, too fiddly like that. And it's, you can see here, it's actually fairly easy to navigate around that circular bit. Just gets a bit odd and difficult when you get uh, further into it. This looks like we're getting a really good yield off here. Really good yield. I'm quite pleased with this. The grass field on here is producing well. And uh, and grass seems to be, in farm sim in general, a really good way of getting income for very little outlay. We found this on the Old Stream Farm at the weekend, where we made a crazy amount of money from three grass 
uh, contracts. And here we're we're funding the farm partly just by having uh, a single odd shaped grass field. I mean, we could probably make this even less odd shaped looking at the uh, the bit that's there. But this is, uh, yeah, this is producing well at the moment, and I'm really quite happy about it. I think I might, though, cut that line straight across there rather than have it go, uh, yeah. We'll cut the end of this field so we get some nice straight lines down here, and, uh, and then that will open up for the rest of the field quite nicely going forwards. So we've been around the field a few times. We're now at the point where we've got three uh, headlands cut. And I'm, uh, I'm just paring this down. Uh, I'm not going around the sides here. I'm just, yeah, working around this bit. We've got a really, really nice amount of grass off here. And, and cutting the middle of each season seems to be our best point for doing it and i'm really pleased that somebody uh, suggested that a little while back because yeah it is making a big difference so our aim is to cut the grass every uh april um july and october and that should give us three cuts a year uh, give the grass enough time to grow back for each one and uh, and means that because we're cutting in October it gets that all important uh, growth in before winter kicks in and uh, and and doesn't cause it to to sort of stunt its growth a bit at the beginning of the year as well which is great whereas we are so much better off uh, cutting with this or cutting doing it this way and look at that that's some really big piles of grass we still had a windrower that would uh that would make some some massive piles uh were we to merge these but we don't because our mower itself actually has a rower built into it and so it saves us the cost of a piece of equipment and means that we are able to skip an entire step and uh, and avoid going round to this field several times when we don't need to. So it saves us fuel as well. Last little patch. And then we can go and switch our mower here out for our baler and move straight on to that. Uh, probably do with filling up with fuel. I'm slightly annoyed with myself. When I came down to the end here and spun round, I missed where the edge of the field was and caught some of my crop. So, uh, yeah, I've destroyed some of my crop, unfortunately. Not very happy with myself for that. That is a rookie error that I should have uh, avoided doing. Now, what I want next is our baler, which is sitting in the shed. That's our nice new Holland baler. Still very much on a red and yellow theme for the most part on here. Only thing that isn't is our combine. Uh, ah, yes, this goes on the end. I don't know what I had previously parked in the middle there. I must have, must have had something. We want to top up the water in our uh, garden and our greenhouse today as well. Or gardens, I should say, and greenhouse. Uh, that way we can get some of that. We have got our first eggs out as well. The first eggs have come from our uh, chickens. All right, let's I'll turn the engine off while we're refilling this. And that is that done. So let's turn it back on. And then we should be able to just swing around. How much fuel do we have left? While we got money, we really want to make sure we keep the fuel topped up. Because, yeah, we end up just running out of fuel and then we're in trouble. So let's do that. Attach that. Attach all that up. Fuel is... Oh, 253 litres. We're fine. I don't think this tractor... I think that will fill this tractor up a couple of times. Let's have a look. Uh, we have... A total, yeah, 105. So, yeah, that will fill it up nearly three times. 
or two and a half times. So yeah, we're fine for fuel for a while. Uh, this tractor though now has 34 hours on it. I really need to take the strain off it with something a little bit bigger because it is just doing so much work, this little tractor. Right, let's start this up. Drop it down. And away we go. Now with a little bit of money in the bank, I'm not actually that worried about how quickly we sell these. We can hold on to these silage bales until we get a uh, the most amount of money for them. Which, when we're doing three full cuts this year, should mean that we end up in a really, really good position as far as uh, being able to take them all in at once. The downside to that, of course, uh, is the fact that we are going to have an awful lot of these to take at once. And I think the way we're going to probably end up looking at investing our money this year is if a, a really good tractor comes up, then we will go and we'll purchase that. We'll, we'll sell stuff and we will, you know, work to get uh, that onto the farm as best we can. I think that is definitely a top priority. Failing that, I think our best bet is to uh, hold on to our stuff, get the best prices for it, and go from there with it. That way we know that uh, we should be able to then afford something uh, to enhance and upgrade our farm by the end of the year, which will be great. Um, I don't know if it's... We're going to have to have a look at how much it costs us to maintain this tractor at some point as well. Because, obviously, as this tractor gets older, uh, it's going to cost us more and more to repair it all the time and keep it going. Um, 40 hours isn't a huge amount, so I'm not overly worried about that yet. And especially if this takes a bit more of a backseat roll where it's not used all the time. Uh, we won't have to repair it so often, so it won't be such a, uh, a massive issue. So it's really a case of seeing how things come along, but at the moment, the plan very, very much is that we're, we're just going to continue on uh, and get our fields cut, get our crops in, and we're in a, a, a pretty strong position to just keep the farm ticking over and making money. And no longer having to be quite as reactive as we've had to be to this point. We should, with any luck, now be able to, to set our own destiny a bit better. And maybe, just maybe, at the end of this year, be able to for afford our second piece of land. We're up to six bales already around this field. Uh, we've got one sitting here, three down that far end, and two down that bottom corner. So uh, I'm thinking we're looking at probably about a dozen bales off here today, uh, is my estimate. If I get if I get six more, I will be happy. Uh, if we get more than that, we are we're doing very nicely on here. So uh, I'm very much hoping that that's going to be the case. But uh, I think six is a fair number you can see there that we had that kink from the baler where this tractor is still a fairly low tractor to be uh bailing with this baler and it and its pickup is so rigid it just lifts you off the ground all the time but uh we're making it work and at some point we will get a tractor that's slightly bigger than this one and uh, and it'll be no problem with this baler going forward from that point so i'm not too worried about it as i said we are able to just work our way through this and uh and and be in a a position where i don't need to panic something i haven't mentioned today is this this is the lime price you can see that the lime price continues to drop uh it's uh it's still all hovering around the 1500 mark i think this is the new lime uh or the update to the lime crusher that we got in uh it did reduce the price of uh of lime quite a bit so we're waiting for that to stabilize uh before we sell any lime off the farm it's why we have still haven't done any 
because we are we have no idea what the top price is at the moment it is not 2800 it's we we are never going to see the likes of that price again um because yeah the lime uh, the lime crusher updated and the price of the lime in that reduced as well as part of that update so it's thrown all our graphs off and uh, and yeah we, we can't get a good idea. We'll still make a decent amount of money from the line when we do work out what the best price or when the best price is. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be nearly £3,000 uh, per thousand litres anymore. That That is just not a price that's ever going to be achievable again. For once, I think my estimates might be spot on. We are up to 11 bales. We've got the 12th bale currently working its way through the baler at the moment. And not a huge amount of grass left on this field. So, yeah, there should be enough here to make one more bale. And then we'll uh, we'll have 12 bales off here. We'll have a dozen bales. Absolutely brilliant. I'm very, very pleased with that. As I said, I wanted that many. I wanted to get the dozen bales off here today. And if we do that, that's going to be 36 bales over the year. Uh, if we look at the prices on that for silage, where are you? There we go. Silage over the year. So top price is 342 per thousand litre. And I think how big are these bales? These are three and a half thousand litre bales. So yeah, they're about a thousand pound a bale. Uh, we're looking at, at sort of 30 odd thousand pounds just for our silage bales for the year which is brilliant absolutely perfect is this going to give us the last nine percent we need no we are ah we are marginally short we are short by just five percent that's annoying we don't have any. Uh, we, we we actually, this is one of the cleanest uh, bits of bailing I think I've ever done. We do not have that last five percent. Never mind. We'll leave it in here, and when we come to do it in the summer, we'll get another bail out fairly quickly. Does give a uh, good argument though for expanding that field just a little bit to add another uh, uh, another sort of half a bale's worth of grass into it so just two more jobs to do today we need to get uh these bales wrapped and off the field and once we've cleared the field off uh we'll be able to roll it we don't actually need to roll this field today um i could i could get away with doing it the next day and just try to see if there's anything that we could do uh, alongside that i mean we've got a lot of we've got a fair amount of stuff to do around the produce and uh, and that kind of stuff you know i could have cut this area here should have cut this area here um but yeah we've got a we got a a load of stuff uh, around the produce that we can do and probably needs doing there we go um but that's mainly just putting the water into the gardens, everything. We want to convert the one that is currently doing potatoes. Uh, that needs to be converted into using fertilizer and seed. So we might end up popping up to the shop and doing that, uh, I think. Uh, I think this area here, I'm going to probably try and make into a dirt area. Uh, just to able to me to see where the crop ends and the the grass starts for a, for first thing and second thing uh because yeah it needs to be cut <laughs> and uh, and it's actually just an area that gets driven on and uh, we drop these silage bales off to to clear the field when we're doing this so yeah I think we could possibly put this down to some dirt in the corner here. Otherwise, yeah, this has been uh, wholly successful today, I think. I'm pleased. Three more bales to get off the field. 
And it's a fairly quick job wrapping these up with this. I, uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite pleased with how quickly uh, this little uh, Vicon, yeah, is the Vicon version. Uh, this is the Vicon wrapper works and just drops them off into this area here. And we just leave them to ferment them. And then come back to them later in the year. I think it might be... Uh, not only do I think it might be wise to put a dirt area down there. I think it might be wise just to put a little shed. Not that the silage bales are need uh, to be undercover. Um, just because it, it's sort of a... It's an area in the middle of the farm where we can store stuff if we need to. And in fact, we do do. Yeah, reverse that out. One more bale after this. And that will be this field. Uh, cut, baled, wrapped. And uh, and soon to be rolled. In a single day. Nice and efficient. Uh, this tractor. Still the perfect little tractor. For what we're doing on here. I'm still. So very happy with it. It's done it. This little tractor has done so well for us on this series. It's been ridiculous. It's probably one of the smallest tractors I've used ever as a main tractor on a farm. And it's done everything we needed it to. We've pushed it to its limits in a couple of places. I mean, I think, I think our stone picker is 110 horsepower. And this little tractor, I think, has a hundred, if I remember correctly. Uh, do we have... No, 95. So it's not even the full ton of horsepower on this. And yet it's still done absolutely everything we've thrown at it. Uh, it struggled on a couple of the hills a little bit. But um, otherwise, yeah, has been absolutely fine. So uh, I'm really pleased with it. It's it's just a cracking little tractor. Having dropped off the last bale, we need to get then this dropped off. Um, we're not going to bother going all the way back to the farm. Somebody did say, oh, why did you go back all the way back to the farm with the, uh, with the wrapper last time we did this? And it's true. We do not need to go all the way back to the farm. We can just grab our roller here. And uh, and then because we're going to dump the roller here again later. We don't need to worry about our uh, wrapper doing that. We do have that pile of stones we roll over every time. That cannot do our roller any good at all. Right, let's roll the end section of this field first. Uh, and then we'll go around the edge and get the rest of the field done. I find it so picturesque with the deer in the background and, and going around the bottom of the trees here and working these fields. This is why I didn't want to, to basically cut all these tree down and, and make all the money on the farm that way. It... It spoils for me the the look of the farm and 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 sort of the whole ambiance of the the lot. So yeah, that's that's why I've never really got too much into forestry on here. I mean, we have done some, but it's it's never been the be all or end all of everything for me on No Man's Land. I think if we got into a large area of forestry on here, uh and, and bought a, a large area of, uh, a, well, a, a, la a bit of land with a large area of uh, of trees on it, then, yeah, we might look at doing that and, and going that way. But otherwise, I'm not really that interested in, in destroying the, the things that make this map uh, so beautiful in places, especially in this kind of sunlight. It just looks awesome on a day like this. And if you take out all the trees, it just becomes this sort of barren wasteland. So, yeah, it's it's just really lovely. And especially when you're driving through the trees like that and you get just specks of sunlight on the tractor. Just really, really nice. I, I absolutely love it. 
Now, a question I am sure to get asked, considering it is being released today, is will we be adding precision farming to this uh, to this series? I, I'm at two minds of it at the moment. We are nearly 40 episodes in, if we aren't already. And I, I don't know if that would help this series at this point. Um, I, I really am waiting for uh, a map with its own soil map. Uh, to come out to uh, to do a series with precision farming and go through with that. So uh, I'd like to know what your thoughts are in the comments, whether you think precision farming for uh, should be added to this series or not. Uh, I, I'm always, as always, interested in your feedback. Um, I, I'm of two minds of it at the moment. Uh, certainly, I will be doing a series... Uh, at, on with precision farming once a map is out with a uh, its own soil map on it um i uh, will also be adding it in my live stream on uh, the realism experiment on carmson farm that will have precision farming in it once uh, carmson has updated with its own soil map as well uh, and in fact that is on a small hiatus uh, that series until then so uh yeah we're going to be playing around with precision farming probably on one or two of the base game maps uh and so as soon as we have something that we can play with that is is customized uh i will uh, i will go with that i know that you can use precision farming on any map um with just the default soil map Personally, I really like to see what maps have with their own custom setup. It's always a, an interesting way to go to to not have that that default one and have something that that fits the contours and the layouts of a specific map uh, and and gives it its own character. So yeah, I know I know I can use it with uh, just the default one. Um, and it probably would be on here. I have no idea if Alien Jim has any plans to update No Man's Land with its own soil map. Um, but, uh, yeah, we uh, we will be doing precision farming. I just don't know whether it will be on this map at all. Got a very small section now just to finish up on here. And then our field will be all rolled and ready for the summer cut. We are, we're jumping ahead. We're, we're, we're just sort of doing one month, uh, sorry, one day months at the moment because we, we don't have that much to do on the farm. We have got ourselves so far ahead and so well prepared that uh, we're, we're just moving along very very nicely and not having to worry about things we're in a sweet spot this this setup here now on no man's land is well established we've got a, a good range of equipment we aren't really needing to uh, to go and buy anything to progress other than possibly as i was saying earlier we, we could do with that second tractor and certainly if we do expand to another piece of land on here, we are going to need another tractor. We are going to need to start doing hired workers and things in order to get everything done. But today, we're, whoops, we're doing okay. We're in a position where uh, that's all of our jobs done. I think we're okay for water in our gardens and everything. Let's just take a quick look at the productions. So uh, we have water in there. We've got water in our potatoes garden. And we've got water, seeds and fertilizer in our tomato production. So I think next time what we'll do is we will go and buy a whole load of seed, uh, seeds and fertilizer. Sort this one out for the tomatoes. Make sure that that's topped up. Uh, sort out our potatoes as well. We'll see if we can switch them over to uh, this where we will produce a lot more potatoes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, lettuce as well. Uh, we will top that water up and sort of get all of our produce 
uh, producing at its highest rate because you know, that's going to bring in more money as well. I'd love to use the potatoes out of there as seed potatoes if I could and then uh, and then plant potatoes on here. But there's no potato harvester. There's no small potato harvester. You know, something that I can run at around about a uh, hundred odd horsepower that I know of. Um, if you do know of one, let me know because I'm I'll be interested in uh, in checking that out. But yeah, there doesn't seem to be one that I can run at that sort of horsepower on a, on a tractor like this, really. Otherwise, there we go. It is twenty past five, and we have done all of our jobs for the day. We've got that field very nicely uh, cut road bailed wrapped uh and the field rolled ready for next time and our little massey ferguson 3709 uh, al is still doing the job brilliantly so happy with this tractor so we're going to leave this here for today all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video please give it a like drop us a comment and give it a share and for all the latest videos from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.